Hello everybody, this is TJ and you are here at New Zealand Mysteries. Thank you to all my subscribers who keep coming back. I adore and appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new here, um, thanks for coming and giving me a chance. I don't do makeup and I don't do sort of storytelling. I uh, go for facts from the media uh, reports at the time and and after so if that's your kind of thing please stick around and let's move on we are talking today about the bizarre disappearance of Luana Williams and um, quite a long time ago but a really big mystery so let's take a look so first we're going to take a look at where this happens it happened in Tauranga Tauranga is a coastal metropolitan city in the Bay of Plenty region and the fifth most populous city of New Zealand with an urban population of 151,000. That was in 2020, or roughly 3% of the natural, national population. It was settled by Māori late in the 13th century by Europeans in the early 19th century and was constituted as a city in 1963. Tauranga is one of New Zealand's main centres for business, international trade, culture, fashion and horticultural science. Tauranga is one of New Zealand's fastest growing cities. So let's have a look on a map where this would be. Here we are with the North Island of New Zealand and if we have a look at this big red dot here, this is where Tauranga is situated. And uh, if we scroll in just a little bit, Gate Pa is the suburb of where this uh, happened. Let's get into the story and find out what happened. One of the first places we're coming to is in New Zealand Missing.wordpress.com, and this is actually our official website for New Zealand Mysteries. And I'll have all the links in the description box below, of course, where you can um, go to these places yourself if you want to. So, Luana Williams born 27th of July 1960 and she went missing on the 5th of June 1986. Luana was last seen at her home in Gate Pa, Tauranga on the 5th of June 1986 at about 6pm by her partner. Her partner and his mate returned home from the pub at 4am to find she had gone. The house was open and the pets were inside which was unusual and Luana was reported missing by her then partner. There was no sign of a struggle, but there was a definitely an indication that she was taken from there. The door was unlocked, the lights were on, the fire guard was away from the fire, and Luana's half-finished drink and cigarettes were on the table. She was declared legally dead in 1998, but the case remains unsolved and her body has never been found. In 2006, human bones were found at McLaren Falls, a week after a psychic investigation of the 20-year-old unsolved murder of Luana Williams was aired on television. Police took two archaeologists to examine skeletal remains discovered at the reserve. In a TV2 show called Sensing Murder, three psychics independently, independently I should say, identified a spot at the falls as the burial site of Luana. So this is where McLaren Falls is in relation to uh, Tauranga and Gate Park. A man phoned police the day after the show screened saying he knew of a skull at the falls, but his discovery was kilometres away from the spot the psychics were drawn to at the top lake end of McLaren Falls. Inquiry Head Detective Sergeant Eddie Little and the two archaeologists were staggered by what they found. Three skeletons were found, but none of them were Luana's remains. In 2013, the case was reopened and police offered $50,000 for information that would lead to her being found or a conviction for the death or disappearance. Detective Inspector Mark Loper told reporters the situation may have changed. Now, this uh, reward is no longer active for this case. So, Inspector, Detective Inspector Loper said, We know over time allegiances and associations change, he said. There may be people in the fringe group 
that may have information and may at this time be willing to part with this, he said. Police processes and technology had advanced, he said. They had a number of persons of interest and were keeping an open mind over suspects. While the review of the case that sparked the award started 18 months ago, new information had come to light. He would not comment on what the information was. He said, I am not prepared to be specific about the new information as I will not do anything that will be detrimental to the ongoing investigation, he said. A number of inquiries fell out of the review as we carried out those inquiries. We received information from members of the public which we are now actively pursuing. It had taken the investigation in a different direction, but he says, beyond that, I cannot comment, he said. So this is good news. Uh, back in 2013, I guess, that they had new leads and people had come forward with some information, but it's still an unsolved case. So, you know, uh, obviously they haven't got enough evidence or they need some more information, which is why we're doing the video to see if there's anyone out there that has new information or not just new information but information in general and that they may come forward. Complaints had been laid previously about the way police handled the case but Loper said, I can't comment on what's gone wrong before we got involved. Our focus is to take the inquiry forward and we're going to have a look into those complaints about police in a bit. To this day, no one has been charged in this case and Luana's remains have never been found. Information down here on who to contact if you have any information. Of course, Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 one. But everything will be in the description box below or if you are on podcast, it will be in the uh, show notes. But um, we have a lot here on New Milk zealandmissing.wordpress.com I have not been able to update it as much as I can lately because of time constraints but um, there's lots of useful information and a lot of missing persons profiles um, I've spent a lot of time on this so I'll put it in the description box below if this is something you want to look at but let's move on so stuff.co.nz this was 2013 and I haven't got any information past 2013-2014. Uh, it seems like no one's mentioned the case since or, or done a report on the case since. Luana Williams cold case reward. So remember this was back then. Police are hoping a $50,000 reward will solve a 27-year-old Tauranga cold case, saying things had changed since one of $20,000 that they uh, put out, failed in 1994. Luana Deborah Laverne Williams was last seen on June 5, 1986 at her home in Munro Street, Tauranga. She was reported missing by her partner. Beautiful woman. Responding to a question about how the new reward would succeed when the old $20,000 one had not, Detective Inspector Mark Loper told reporters the situation may have changed. We know over time allegiances and associations change, he said. There may be people in the fringe group who, again, may have information and may at this time be willing to part with it, he said. Police processes and technology had advanced, he said. They had a number of persons of interest and were keeping an open mind over suspects. He was hoping the reward would provide the little nugget of gold we require. Ideally, that would be the location of the body so we can get her home to her family where she belongs. And, you know, sometimes I wonder if justice is all that important compared to getting someone's body home so that they can grieve and they have some answers. Um, I don't know because I've never been in that situation, thankfully, but, um, yeah. While the review of the case that sparked the reward started 18 months ago, new inf information had come to light. He would not comment on what that was. Uh, a number of inquiries fell out of the review, and as we carried out those inquiries, we received information from members of the public, which we are now actively pursuing. It had, had taken the investigation in a different direction, but beyond that I cannot comment, he said. 
The missing woman could be described as colourful, he said. The case had its difficulties with police unable to locate some witnesses. We've had to invent ways to fill those gaps, Loper said. The missing William uh, woman's family had been right on side with us, he said. Police had not spoken to the missing woman's boyfriend. I don't know why not. I think if you're doing a, um, bringing up the case and reopening it and it was the partner, I'm sure you would talk to him. Um, that's a bit weird, but I, you know, who, who knows? Melanie and Jacqueline Williams, the sisters of the missing woman, woman praised the police action. Gosh, I've got real mouth mush today. Sorry about that. We think it is really great that we have a police team that are showing us that they are dedicated to solving Luana's disappearance, they said, adding the case had been stressful for the family. Events over the last 27 years have had a crazy and stressful effect on the family and have greatly attributed to ill health, the sister said. What is really sad is that our father passed without any resolution. The hardest thing has been seeing a hand reaching out to clench the heart soul and guts from our parents a lot has been said over the years and a lot has been reported in the media not of all of it accurate anything said in the past is in the past and we want to move forward knowing it was never a closed case helped and the family had lived in hope of answers it's very hard for me because i have only a handful of media outlets to get information from here in New Zealand there's only like two or three and I have to believe that it's accurate the information if I can't get hold of family members then that's all I've got to go on um, and it's hard when the family say that some of the information isn't accurate so if there's any family members that do watch this and want to clarify anything please let me know and I'll give you some details to get hold of me shortly they say if anyone involved in Luana's disappearance or with information about what happened to her had a conscience, they would have come forward by now. Williams was reported missing from her Munro Street home by her then partner Steve Prol. Prol and Tauranga resident Ross returned home from the pub at 4am to find she had gone. They believed she had been abducted. And when you saw the scene you realise straight away there was no sign of a struggle, he said, but there was definitely an indication she was taken from there. The door was unlocked, the lights were on, the fire guard was away from the fire and Luana's half-finished drink and cigarettes were on the table. And being an ex-smoker, I can tell you that a smoker would not go anywhere willingly without taking their cigarettes with them. Even for if it was only going to be for five or ten minutes, I definitely know that. And of course more information down here where you can contact um, and police and we're going to have that soon. Now this one's from the Otago Daily Times, odt.co.nz and it's just a little about this uh, Detective Inspector Mark Loper. He has been described as a super sleuth and now Detective Investigate, no, Detective Inspector Mark Loper hopes to crack the 27-year-old mystery of the disappearance of Tauranga woman Luana Williams. Look, guys, I'm not going to edit out all my mouth mush. I could be here for absolutely hours. I'm only human, and some days my mouth mush is worse than other times. And I'm sorry, I hope you get a bit of a giggle out of it, to be honest. A review of the murder of Luana Deborah Laverne Williams began 18 months ago. Miss Williams was aged 25 when she disappeared from her Gate Pa home on June 5, 1986. A member of the public has provided police with new information, but Mr Loper said he could not comment on specifics, again because it may jeopardise the investigation. So he just repeats a number of inquiries fell out of the review and as we carried those inquiries out, we received info from members of the public, which we are now actively pursuing. It is information that hasn't previously been brought to our attention and has taken the investigation in a different direction. So this is so positive that some people are speaking, you know, maybe they do have a conscience and, and allegiances may have changed and they're starting to speak. 
Mr. Loper told the Blay of plenty times he believed every case could be solved with time, but he was modest about his, quote, Mr. Solve It reputation. He said, my role is to oversee homicide investigations, and that includes cold cases. He said, I review cold cases regularly, and when cases get reviewed, new information comes to light. Every file is different. It's not about me, it's about the victims and their families. Mr. Loper said time meant fresh eyes could look over cases and follow new leads. Retired Detective Inspector Graham Bell, who we all know was the face of Police 10-7, uh, which is like a New Zealand crime watch show, said Mr. Loper's reputation as a super sleuth was well founded. He said he is certainly a great detective who has a reputation for solving cases. Mr. Bell had worked with Mr. Loper on several occasions and described him as a dedicated and dogged investigator. He says, I have every confidence in him and his ability to solve this case. So it's, I, I wonder if the case is still active and if he is still looking uh, at information uh, and following up leads on this case now. Um, I'll leave the just description box below the link to here because there's a little bit of information on cases in New Zealand that he actually has helped uh, solve and investigate. So Mr Loper had already left his mark on this case on what is one of Tauranga's oldest mysteries by tracking down witnesses who have never before been spoken to. Every case has its own difficulties he said for us we had to take the file and peel it back to the original he said. Mr Loper is leading a team of eight detectives working on the case. I doubt all of them are working on the case now, but let's hope it's still being looked at. A $20,000 award offered in 1994 failed to draw out any helpful information, but Mr Loper was optimistic about their chances this time. He said, we know that over time allegiances and associations change, we know there may be people in the fringe group that have info and may be willing to speak up. And again, her boyfriend saw her about 6pm on the night she disappeared and arrived home the next morning, 4am, to find she was gone. And just before we move on to the next uh, article, if you have any information on the cases I cover, please call Crime Stoppers. 0800 555 one. Any other contact information will be in the description box below along with all this information. You can call police on 105 or contact your local police station. If you have any case suggestions, nzmissing at gmail.com. You can find New Zealand Mysteries on Facebook and where you listen to your favourite podcasts. And of course that website nzmissing.wordpress.com. Thank you to everyone who has kindly gone to buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ Mysteries and shout me a coffee. I really appreciate it and um, it goes a long way helping the channel. If you don't like it that way, there is a PayPal link in the description box as well to make a donation. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, I know it only takes you guys a few seconds to do that, but it means a hell of a lot to the show. It really does. So please do that. And let's keep going. I want to make sure that all sides are covered to the story, I guess. And so I wanted to mention this. The site is TL news, which is T-E-A-O-M-A-O-R-I dot news and it's about a program I think called Native Affairs. Luana Williams was 25 years old when she disappeared from her Tauranga home on June 5th 1986. Her exit was swift, leaving behind her cigarettes, passport and purse. So what happened to Luana Williams and did police do their best to find out? Or is the handling of her case another example of systemic failures within the New Zealand police force? Both Brian Bruce from the television series Investigator and North and South magazine journalist Mike White have independently investigated and reported on Luana Williams' case and come to their own conclusions. I have watched parts of this, but I'm going to leave, obviously, the link below. So if you want to see the full... Um, discussion that you can. They joined Mahingarangi 
Forbes in studio along with Auckland University criminal law lecturer Kylie Quince. Before I read this last article, just a, a, a mention, and I probably don't have to mention this because I know um, the subscribers in our community are amazing, but just be careful in the comments below because there's a good chance that family members and friends are going to read them and we want to be kind and be careful. We also do not tolerate any victim blaming or shaming on this uh, channel at all. So if I see anything like that, it's going to be out of there. All right, let's look into this last case, which puts a little bit of a spin on things. nzherald.co.nz, disgraced police officer named in cold case affidavit. This was back in 2013. So this is Brad Shipton, and Kiwis might uh, know his name. Detectives reinvestigating the disappearance of Luana Williams, 27 years ago have interviewed a former prison officer who claims that Luana told her she was a police informant and gave sexual favours to disgraced former detective Brad Shipton. Shipton and a second detective who Luana allegedly claimed also had sex with her later headed the investigation into her disappearance. So wow, uh, did they do the interviewing and the investigating properly that's going to be a very big question Janie Bowen a prison officer for 25 years and the widow of a policeman made the claims in a 2011 affidavit she gave to documentary maker Brian Bruce and has since given further details to police although Brad Shipton denies ever having met Luana Bowen claims that Luana said she knew Shipton, who was a detective sergeant, when he was sentenced in 2005 to eight and a half years jail for a 1989 gang rape at Mount Monganui. He was found not guilty of raping Louise Nicholas and Rotorua in 1985 and 1986, and not guilty of kidnapping and indecently assaulting a 16-year-old girl in Rotorua in 1980s. He was granted parole in November 2008 after serving a third of the sentence. Luana, obviously, was last seen at her Tauranga home on June 5, 1986. Her boyfriend Stephen, who had been with another woman near their home, reported her missing the next day. Luana had a history of drugs and prostitution and had been in Arohata Prison in Wellington on drug charges. Um, that doesn't make any difference to us she's still a, a young lady that has gone missing and we need to find out what happened to her and whether the investigation was any good and that's the important thing Bowen claimed that Luana's, Luana had suggested that crimes such as drug dealing were minimised by certain police in Tauranga in return for sexual favours Bowen approached Bruce after an episode of the investigator about the case Bruce handed her affidavit to police and Detective Inspector Mark Loper interviewed, interviewed Bowen last year. The Herald understands that she gave further details, including that one of five telephone numbers Williams put forward for authorisation when she was in jail was checked by Wellington Police and found to be a private police number. Bowen claimed that Luana said the number was Brad Shipton's. Shipton was interviewed by police last year as part of an expanded inquiry ordered by Police Commissioner Peter Marshall after complaints to the Independent Police Complaints Authority by Luana's family and Bruce. The other officer, Bowen, says that Luana named was Detective Inspector Phil Seaman. Seaman and Shipton took over their inquiry into Luana's disappearance. Police initially treated it as a missing persons inquiry but upgraded it to a murder inquiry in 1994. Seaman concluded that Luana had committed suicide. He also himself committed suicide in 2009 after becoming ill. Police declined to say whether Shipton's role in the case was part of the inquiry. We have a number of persons of interest, Detective Inspector Mark Loper told the Herald, I will not be drawn into comment about individuals. Inquiries at the prison have formed part of the ongoing investigation. The Herald understands that past attempts by prison staff to find 
Lawana's Arahata phone visitor and bank records were unsuccessful. The police file of the drug investigation, in, uh, investigation, which resulted in Williams being jailed, was destroyed. Police have told Bruce that this was likely in 1988 or 1989, while the inquiry into her disappearance was continuing, but that no record has been found to indicate who destroyed the file and why. It was noted, however, that some files could be destroyed under police guidelines of the time, five years after the matter was filed. But they seem pretty sure that it was likely 88, 89, by the sound of that. Brad Shipton's lawyer, Bill Nabney, did not respond in time for this article, but in August, Brad Shipton emphatically denied knowing Luana before or during her time in prison and said the first time he became aware of her, was when he was asked to investigate her disappearance. Now, God, what do you believe from him? I mean, he's just a scumbag, isn't he? So um, I wouldn't put too much into what he says, that's for sure. Very bizarre story. And, uh, you know, I really feel for the family of this young lady. She was only 25 very very tough uh please if you have any information you know the numbers are below share this out where you can uh and people you may know from that area or may know what's going on something like that please like subscribe and hit the notification bell it means a really lot heaps to me i really appreciate it i'll see you next time thanks for watching this is tj see you later guys